Akai Pro have released a new software to make beat making available to pretty much anyone with a computer. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can go ahead and set up the Akai Pro MBC Beats. Check it out. What's up everybody? My name is Matthew Stratton with MatthewCreating.com bringing you the best tips and tools on creating music. On this channel, I'll do setup videos like this one that I'm doing here. I'll do tutorials and overviews as well. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. So if you didn't know, MPC Beats is a new software from Akai Professional and it basically brings the MPC workflow to anybody. So what I want to do is show you how to set it up to get going right away. It doesn't really take a lot to get going, but if you're brand new to beat making, you might not understand a few concepts. So I'm going to go ahead and show you a few things so you can get started right away. So in order to get the MPC Beats download, you need to go to akaipro.com and right here it says products and then it says MPC series. Right here to the right of that, it says MPC software. Click that. You'll see this screen here. If you scroll down a little bit, you'll see MPC Beats. So you got a few options, learn more, MPC expansions, and then download. If you click download, you're gonna get this pop-up. What you gotta do is actually fill out this pop-up. So after you answer the questions, click get download link. That's gonna take you to this page that says request submitted. Now keep in mind, this might take a couple minutes, so be patient with it, um, but it will come into your email. And let me show you that now. All right, so if you're using Gmail, check your promotions tab. If you're using any other mail, check your spams tab, and it might be in there. Now, if you look here, it says, welcome, Matthew. Here's your download link. You can do Mac or PC, and then basically you would just click that and download it. All right, and then you get included content, which is really cool because you get the Beats producer kits, you get the Beats demos and templates, and then you get your F9 instruments. Go ahead and download those as well, but you don't necessarily have to download those for the software to work. These are just extra sounds to get into your software so you have more sounds to choose from. So I pulled the MPC Beats 2.8.1 download from the downloads folder onto the desktop so we can see it here. So make sure you know where you save this and then this way you have access to it. I will do a separate video for the expansion install. This video is gonna cover the actual software setup. So the first thing you gotta do is you gotta download the MPC Beats software. And when you download it, you need to extract it from the folder here. So you just need to extract it from the zip folder. And then whenever you extract it from there, you just install it like you would normally install any other program or app. All right, so once you get your installer open, go ahead and read through this end user agreement right here. Okay, and then accept the agreement, click next. All right, I'm gonna create a desktop shortcut, click next. And you basically click install. And it takes a couple minutes to install. And then once it's done, you can go ahead and select the option to open up the MPC Beats software. So once it's done installing, go ahead and click finish. And you can see right here, I have launch MPC Beats already clicked. So I'm going to click finish and it's going to launch MPC Beats. Now, once you open up the MPC Beats software for the first time, you're going to get a screen that says MPC Beats. Start by plugging in a MIDI device. So you can use whatever MIDI device that you have. In my situation, I'm going to use the Akai Professional LPD8 wireless. Although it's a wireless unit, I'm going to use the USB cable. I'm just going to plug this in. Now, this is a plug and play device. So once I plug it in, it already sets everything up automatically, which I've already done. But just make sure your device is installed properly, whatever you're using. So once you have that plugged in, it says click next to continue. I'm going to click next. Now you'll see on this window, it already picks up that I'm using the Akai LPD8 wireless. All right, now I wanna show you this. If you click that, you can see all the different factory presets. Now, in addition to that, you can create a new MIDI map. So if your device wasn't on that list, you can create a new MIDI map. Just because your device isn't on the list, doesn't mean you can't use your controller. It works with standard MIDI, so if you have a USB MIDI device, chances are you're gonna be able to work with it just fine. You just have to map things manually. As a matter of fact, I will eventually make a video about that, so remember to check the card up there to go to that video if you want help setting up your MIDI controller with it. All right, so it picked up what I was using naturally right there, the Akai LPD8 wireless, so I'm just going to go to next. And then we have two different modes here. We got a simple mode and an advanced mode. Now, simple mode does take some of the options off the screen for you, or you can select the advanced mode. The advanced mode is gonna show you basically the standard software. I believe in you, I'm gonna pick advanced, so I'm gonna click advanced right there. So after I click advanced, I'm gonna click next, 
Okay, and then it says that you can change the workspace later on. So you can change this by going to your menu view, workspace, simple, or advanced right there. But at that point, let's start making beats, okay? Now, we get some different templates here. So what I want to do is I'm actually just going to load up a demo. I'm just going to pick this first demo, and then I'm actually just going to load that up. Double-click it. It's going to load it up, and you can see we got this demo set up. Now, the thing is... You do need an audio interface setup for this to work. Now, you can try to use your Windows sound card, but that's probably not going to be sufficient. So if you don't have an audio interface, I recommend you download ADO for All. I'll leave a link in the description. So make sure you check the description for you know show notes about this video, and you're going to see that link down there. All right, so let me show you this. If you go to the menu, and then if you go down to Edit, and then down here is Preferences, Okay, so if you go there, you can see the audio device is set up on Windows Audio, and it might be whatever device you have here. But what I'm going to do is select ASIO. You can see it says ASIO. So it switches out to ASIO drivers. And just know for now, if you're new to this, that's just going to make it to where it's going to be more playable. It's going to make the latency go down, and you're going to be able to play the pads a lot easier, and you're going to hear the audio easier if you pick this. All right, so there you go, ASIO for all. All right, now if you do have a audio interface, go ahead and select that now. In my case, I'm going to pick the Focusrite because I'm going to use the Focusrite USB. Okay, so I'm going to select that there. Okay, so I'm going to use headphones. It doesn't matter. You can plug your audio interface into some speakers or your headphones. If you don't know what an audio interface is, again, I'll leave a link or a card at the top. So go ahead and check that card right there. It's going to tell you what an audio interface is. I want to plug these headphones into the Focusrite. So on the front of the Focusrite, right here, there's a headphone jack. So you could plug those in there. And again, I'm not going to cover everything about how to set up an audio interface in this. Um, just know that you can plug your headphones into your audio interface and you could put these line out into speakers. All right, I'm just going to click test. All right, we're working pretty good right there. Now, I'm going to set my buffer size a little bit lower. I'm going to set my buffer size at 256 samples. And it just lowers my latency a little bit better. And that's just going to make it a little bit easier for me to play the pads. So it depends on your computer how you set that up. All right, so now that the audio interface is set up, I'm going to go to MIDI slash sync. And you can see the Akai LPD8 wireless is right there. And it's set to control. So basically when it's on control, you can see this thing pops up. And you can see it says enable control to send MIDI from this device to MIDI Learn. So that's going to enable me to actually map the controls manually if I wanted to. If you're finding value in this video, remember to give it a thumbs up down below. It's going to help this channel. It's going to help this video get seen by your fellow beat makers. I do appreciate you for doing that. And I'm sure the rest of the community does too. All right, so there you go there. So I think I'm pretty much set up right there. Now... What you might want to do as well, if you do have VST set up, you want to set up your VST folder. So you would check this little tick right here and you would search for your VST folder. All right, and then I'm going to go to my C drive, program files. And I have VSTs in a couple different places. So that's why it gives you four different slots so you can load them up wherever you have your VSTs at. But I'm going to pick Steinberg, okay? And then right here it says VST plugins, okay? I'm going to select that. And once I'm in that folder, I'm going to click open. And then I'm going to set my other spot because I do have another spot. I do remember. Um, I do have stuff from Native Instruments on here. So I'm going to go into Program Files. And then I'm going to go to Native Instruments. And then I'm going to go into my plugins here. Okay. Now make sure there's nothing down here where it says File. You just want to be in that folder. Click Open. Now, once you have these checked, press rescan all. So it's going to scan all the VSTs in those folders. And when it's done, you know, you just simply click OK, and then you'll be able to access those VSTs. So that's done scanning. I'm going to click OK. All right. So I'm going to hit the space bar, and we should be able to hear this demo project that we loaded up. And we do. We're all set up right there. All right, so that's set up there as far as our audio interface. So let's go ahead and test our MIDI controller. So here we go. This should be a kick drum right here. It's a snare drum. 
Hi hat. Yeah, so we could be able to play our drums. So I do want to show you that the VSTs do actually show up. So if I click down here where it says insert, I can load up the Akai Pro effects and the Air effects, and I can also load up VSTs. So right here, I got my choice of VSTs so I can, you know, load up any of these. So I'm just going to load up the scope here so you can see it. All right. So you can see the VSTs do load up. Now, if you do want to load up a VST to a plugin track, you would click plugins and then you would select your VST here. So right there it says VST. So you can select that. Okay. And then, you know, you would load that onto that track. So if I click that, you'll be able to see that this plugin actually load up. This is not an Akai professional plugin. This is a completely separate plugin. So if you listen, the pads actually do work on this as well. So we're all hooked up, everything's working fine. We can go ahead and get started making beats. So if you want more videos about the MPC beat software, click or tap the screen over here. It's gonna take you to a video series that I'm going to do about the MPC beat software. It's gonna get you up and running so you can start making beats right now. All right, remember to subscribe to the channel when I do come out with the new videos for MPC Beats. Continue creating music, all right? My name is Matthew, you know, I hope you start making beats, start making music. We'll talk soon.